I want you to understand the connection between good news and the beginning of all things. Good news and everything before you get to Messiah's birth in in a flesh suit, okay? That's why I read you John 1, 1 all the way to this point because all of this is connecting to that this is a complete package. It's not something new. Because all Christians are told the good news is a new thing since Messiah was born and since he died and was resurrected even. Forget even when he was born, just the idea that he died and was resurrected. I want to see that it's not, that's not the case. It is good news and it legitimately is part of the good news but it's not the complete full idea of the good news. Crying aloud, the good news is he's real. He is all this. Nobody taught him this stuff. Nobody counseled him. He is the top. So the good news is that you can have a relationship with that. The good news is that you can find out how to have a relationship with him. See, this is all being told before Messiah comes in the flesh. And by the way, who's John talking to? People that knew about Isaiah, because he quoted Isaiah. I mean, he told them he was quoting Isaiah. And so these people were expecting this good news. That Yahweh's coming with his blessing in his hand and also his recompense. That he's real. What did it say there? The good news he says, see your Elohim. See, you guys don't see it. You don't get it. You know, I know God exists. Yeah, but you don't see him. You don't see him as he is. You don't see him right. If you did, you'd live differently. He's saying to these people, you guys have been doing this all wrong. Your head's been wrong. Your attitude's been wrong. Your approach has been wrong. The way you've been doing this is wrong. The good news is you can see him right and do it right. Christians, are you listening? I'm not, so I'm not picking on you. I want you to hear this. This is for you. We're gonna, actually, when we get to Acts, we'll see how much it's for you because then Peter goes to the Gentiles and say, the good news is for you. But the good news is indifferent. It's all, all of the good news, while they have different ways of being said and they focus on different aspects, are all saying the same thing. It's about you accepting, embracing, and seeing correctly and then acting upon what you see correctly from the beginning, the creator and the Messiah. And one didn't give law to Judah and the, you know, or to Israel and the other didn't like, take it away. What a rebellious son that would be. So how does he bring repentance to Gentiles who didn't know anything? By bringing to them the reality that there's a path, there's a way to have relationship with the creator. And when you realize that path is stuff you haven't been doing or is it, it says not to do stuff you haven't doing, then you can repent, which says, I'm sorry, I've been living this way. I'm gonna turn this thing around and do what you said. See, that's the good news. See, the good news does not take away. It brings Torah observance to people to understand that this is the relationship behavior with the creator. This is the expectation of relationship behavior. Okay? But Christianity's lied to you and told you the opposite. You just have to believe in Messiah and you have to have a relationship with him. But how? He says, if you love me, keep the commandments. Okay? And why would he say that? I don't know, because he gave them. Maybe that's why, because they're his. He's trying to tell you, you you guys have not really embraced who you're dealing with. You've decided, you know what this is saying? I'm going to summarize it in real simplicity. You have molded him in your own image. And you've made him what you want him to be. So this is the good news. The good news is he really is all these things and you better straighten it out and you have a way to straighten it out and you have a path to straightening it out and he's waiting for you to straighten it out and ready to have that relationship with you. But you gotta stop molding him into the image you think he should be. That's not buying into the image that others have decided he should be. He tells you what he is and his expectations and what they are. And you need to just knock that other stuff off. He says, I don't care if you think you're a ruler of the earth. Those guys are nothing. How do you prepare the way of Yahweh? By saying his law was done away with? By doing whatever you want? Or by worse, taking stuff that other people were doing and claiming it's what he wanted? Like Christmas and Easter and stuff that is not his? But spinning it in and making it his? Shame on you for that. 
All you Christians that are watching, you need to know that your system you're in is a shameful system that lied to you and brought paganism into what Yahweh put in place. And worse, they did away with everything he said to do. They just wiped it off and said, no, you don't have to do any of that stuff. Well, you could just arbitrarily just do what you think is a good person. I get two, I get any number of you, two, three, 10, doesn't matter, and I will not get two in any group to agree what a good person really is. You'll agree on some aspects, but you will not agree on what a good person does and doesn't do. A God you believe in wasted his breath for 4,000 years? Like, he's too stupid to realize human beings just can't do this? That's what you're being told. You're, we're just too weak and too stupid to do this. So we just take that out of the way, because clearly obedience is the problem. Like, giving us something we have to obey. So let's just get rid of that. And it took him 4,000 years to figure that out. Man, he's slow. He's really slow. 4,000 years to figure out that we can't do this. Really? Is that what you believe? Because that's what you believe if you keep acting the way you've been acting and listening to the nonsense you're listening to. You're saying you believe that. That he's too dumb to have known. Wait, he knows the end from the beginning. So he did know. He knew we were going to screw this up. Matter of fact, he told Moses, and when you go and screw this up and I go and punish you, he said all of that to them in advance. He also said, and you will turn around and do it right and do what you're supposed to do. He didn't say, I will realize how dumb I am and I'll take that away from you needing to do anymore. For Messiah is the goal of the Torah unto righteousness to everyone who believes. Messiah is the goal. In other words, doing the righteousness unto belief eventually makes you him. Transforms you into him. Not like he was the goal, meaning he showed up so now we don't have to do it. Doing it is what makes you into him. That is the goal of that righteousness. You're doing it to become him. Okay? For Moses writes about the righteousness, which is of the Torah. The man who does these shall live by them. But the righteousness of belief says it this way. Well, that must be different than what Moses said. No, he's going to quote Deuteronomy 30. He's saying, do, you, do not say in your heart, who shall ascend into the heavens, that is to bring Messiah down, ooh, or the Torah, which is Deuteronomy 30. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. We just quoted that from Deuteronomy 30. That is the word of belief which we are proclaiming. Paul's proclaiming Deuteronomy 30. This good news was anticipated, expected, Waiting, people were waiting for it. It's not a new thing. This is something they've been sitting back in the dispersion going, I wonder when we're going to get this good news. It's also good news that they weren't waiting for it. They're just sitting there going, oh, I guess my life is terrible. Then all of a sudden they find out the good news is, oh, no, you can teshuvah. You can fix this. So this is good news. Now, it's not new because it was said from the beginning that this would happen, but everybody in the dispersion over the centuries when they got totally disconnected from Elohim, all of a sudden they recognize and realize there's a, there's a creator being, and they go, oh, this is good news. I can get a relationship. I can restore that relationship. Isn't that good news? His, his word works because it's right, it's truth. You know why it's right and truth? Because he does, it just read you the verses saying he built all of this and so he knew what we needed to do in this thing he built. All right, so you got a car. Can you just pour like anything in your engine, in like where the gas goes? Can you, anything you want? No. As a matter of fact, you can't even put almost any grade you want. It actually says on your car, put 87 on this, put higher one on that or whatever, right? It's told, don't put diesel in this or whatever. So... You're actually told what the thing that was built by the person who built it is what you need to put in the thing that was built. That's the same as us. The builder who made us tells us how we need, what we need to do to function right. He gave us an owner's manual. But now you want to do away with the owner's manual. 